Well, besides just naming a region or naming a track header, uh, I like to also do visual as well. So there are two ways to actually not name but color, but make this visual presence that I can either read or see. So, for example, here I have a string part here and it's green, right? Then I have these string parts that come in here and I'm sort of like get my window so I can see everything. Okay, there from a the horizontal view right there. And I may want to change the color of a couple of string parts, right? So I'm going to go back here to view and I'm going to select show colors. And here I can see the colors. So I can select here, I know that color. But I want this to maybe be blue. And it is blue. And this one here to be blue as well. This is blue too. Yeah, I got a better way. I can just undo that, undo that. I can click here on that one. Then I'm going to press shift and click on this one. And I've got two of them selected. And now I made them both blue. That way I can see, well, this blue one's the, the way that one feels. And the green one feel green, so they're green right there. And I can change the color of those regions. I can also go back in and select several regions. I go to here and I say, well, this region here, and then this one here, of course, I'm holding down shift. And then I want to select all these regions here, like that, and make them purple if I want to. I want to do that. Kind of, of course, just drag across them like that, like I would with, with a marquee tool, and do the same thing, where I get to change the color of the regions. Now, besides just changing the color of a region or several regions, I might want to change the color of a track. So I'm going to go here to view, and I can pull up my mixer window. I got it right here, and here's my mixer window. And what I want to probably do is change the color of some items. Like, for example, here, I've got a master fader here, and we can see that it's purple, right? It's my master fader. And I'm going to go back up here to view and select show colors again. And I might want to change that color to something different. I'm just going to test some colors I like here. Maybe this one might work better. And see, I can change the color of that. That's really cool. I can do that. I may want to go to here. I've got this reverb one here. And I got this one here too. I may want to change the color of that. So I may want this one a little lighter than that one. And then this one here, a little bit lighter than that one. And I get a chance to have these different colors for different parts of my mix. I know, okay, what, this is the vo vocal reverb, this is the verb chorus verb, this is the synth verb. I know what these auxiliaries are, and you can change the color of them totally. Now I can close this window out, and I go back here, and we don't actually see that right happening. We do see that we have some of these uh, regions have already been named, right? I don't have the colors there. So I can go right back here, I can go to assign track color. And once I do, we'll see it right here. And of course, our color menu comes right up here, the palette. And we can look and see, and maybe change colors if we want to. And we can make them all work evenly. This, for example, here's a kick drum. I have a kick drum here, and I've got a different color here for the kick drums. I may want it all to be the same. So I can go back in here, and I want to make track color by region. I want to make region color by tracks. I do that, and now all the regions that belong to this track are all the same color. It's kind of cool. Another great way to sort of not name or color, but to sort of see also is to change some of these icons you have for your channel header. You can see right it says kick drum, so it's a big drum right there, right? And these are easy to change. You can go right here to the inspector. I'm going to turn this triangle up here and then turn this group triangle up here. I'm going to look at this track triangle and we see this icon here, right? And I just click right there, and I can pick if I think something else sounds better. That's actually a drum machine kick drum. That's not really this acoustic one, so I can go right here, and I put that in. I got a drum machine icon. I like that better than the other one. It appears here, and then I can change the look of that track to know, okay, that's the drum machine. That's that MPC-60 I'm using right there, right? It makes it much easier. Close my icon back, the little eye inspector eye out, and I'm back to where I was at before. I can also, of course, um, to adjust my tracks and for view, is you saw earlier, I can go to here, I can go down and click like that. I can click real quickly. I can also just go to here, let's get this one back to the same level as that before. 
I can just drag. I'm going to drag this here, and I put the snare before that. Drag it here, snare like that. I can put the hi-hats like that. So you can change the order in which you want to see any track by just dragging and moving it there. I'm going to slide on top of it, and it makes it much easier for you to view. And it gives you a better way to organize the structure of your session. It's important because when I'm in a mixing studio and I'm going to use an analog board, I'll do the same thing. I'll start marking on certain tracks as being vocal, put down B, D, or C, or whatever. But here in the software, it's so cool. You can see it through color, you can name it, and you can change the icons.